Hey guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer, and today, as part of our weekly Wednesday studio composing videos, I wanted to shed some light on one of the best ways I have found to manage a very large orchestral template when writing music for films, games, TV, etc. So what I'm going to show you very quickly is how I have set up Audio Groceries plugin called Logic X Toolkit Pro. Now this is a system that only works in Logic, but I think it is an incredibly underutilized method for maximizing your RAM in your computer and making a really quick and easy writing style that can really speed up your writing time when you're working with a large orchestra. So let's jump right in here. Now first things first, the website to find this plugin is audiogrocery.com and you'll notice that it's called AG Toolkit and I will leave a link in the description to this video so you can check it out. The current price is 69 euro which is about 75 US dollars. It's a little bit pricey but what this can do is absolutely incredible with logic. It's basically controlling the articulations with a scripture code that allows you to then associate one of your MIDI controls on your keyboard or your iPad, whatever, that lets you slide up and down between all of your articulations in your Logic session. It's a really cool way and really fast way to write music. So here is an example of what I'm doing in a live project. So I recently created a Christmas track where I utilized a Logic session that has I don't know, maybe 50 different instruments loaded and each of those instruments through Vienna Ensemble Pro 6 has probably 10 more instruments. So we're looking at um, probably three to 400 instruments represented right now. And I only have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So you'll notice up here at the top, I only have 1.8 gigs left of space, but I am absolutely using it all across the four cores of my machine. And this is an older machine from 2010, an iMac, so um, the fact that I'm able to maximize it this much is pretty incredible. And I have Viana Ensemble Pro to thank for that, but also this Scripter plugin. So the way that this works is I have each of my instruments, let me pick one for example, such as flutes. You notice if I zoom in here, that at the bottom of Logic, I have a scripter plugin which controls the articulation and I have the plugin itself which is connected to Vienna Ensemble Pro. So you'll notice that I have an entire window here dedicated to this. It's connected and what I have up here is with the latest version of Vienna Ensemble. Um, version number six allows us to organize all of our instruments by instances. Now this is a function that was not capable in previous versions. So what it means is instead of having separate windows for ethnic winds, flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, etc., I can actually put them all like tabs with little X's. And then if I want to take that tab, I can click and drag it out and create a new window and organize these however I wish. But currently it's all one window, which functions very nicely. So. The way I have this connected is, let's say, for example, in my ethnic winds, you'll notice how it's just one track. And if I were to go over to my channels, etc., my MIDI channels, I have all of those represented all the way down to 16. And what I'm basically doing here is with my scripter plugin, you'll notice that the patch slash channel name is currently set to Ivory Wind. So I only actually have three Ethnic Wind patches loaded through Vian Ensemble Pro. But what I've done is any time that I move my MIDI controller, one of my knobs, one of my faders on there, you'll notice how it slides up and down between all 16 channels. And so that Ivory Wind sound, if I go back to Vian Ensemble, you'll notice that it's my very first patch there. And because I have this routed so that each of these instruments, if I were to go over to my mixer, you'll notice that all three of these are functioning like a multi, which means using contact on this one patch, I have each of these three associated with that one patch. 
So I have Ivory Wind, a Shire Whistle on channel two and Yulian Pipes on channel three. So if I were to just cycle through these real quick, there's number one. If I cycle up, changes to Shire Whistle. And then my pipes. One of my favorite functions of contact is the purge samples function. So what I can do is in each of these patches, I can preload it to where over here in my options for that one particular patch, I can go to purge and go down to purge all samples. So what that would do, I don't want it to load at the moment, but what that would do is on my keyboard down here, you notice how all in blue, how each of those patches is loaded, but what would happen is if I purge them, they would all disappear. But what happens is as I play individual notes, they would reappear on the keyboard and then load that back into the RAM. So currently this patch is only taking up 3.4 megabytes. But if I were to load all of the notes possible, it might go up maybe to triple or quadruple that. And this is one of the best ways that you can save space. You can also save space by going to your voices and changing the max number of polyphony, in this case to four or two. A lot of these patches have 128, 256, which is a ridiculous number that is taking up a lot of memory. So if you reduce those, you can really start saving space and only using exactly what you need to. So you can see this entire multi is only currently using 42 megabytes. And that adds up once you start doing into the hundreds of these. So another example, such as trumpets, for example, if I go down here, if I select trumpets, there are my different articulations. And as I slide up and down, you can see how they change. So you'll notice again, if I go over to Vion Ensemble, it automatically links, which is very nice. And you'll notice if I play, for example, solo trumpet, I can easily slide up and down. So you can imagine the possibilities for writing very quickly because I can instantly access the exact articulation I need. And I've done this for every instrument group, every individual instrument, and then all the way down to choir, for example, which I have three of my favorite choirs pianos, I have probably 10 different pianos loaded on here, different sounds, I have a harp, all my different strings, and strings come in a bunch of different patches, so it's a really great way. And you'll also notice the cool thing about Vienna Ensemble is that it can mix and match different companies. So it do not all have to be contact. So this one right here is a contact multi because it's representing different companies that are contact patches. But over here, this is East West Play, which is definitely not contact but with Vion Ensemble Pro, they can play nicely together. I can set my outputs. In this case, you'll notice channel 10 is my Bartok Pits. So if I go to my browser window, you can see how each of these is associated with a specific MIDI channel. In this case, 11, 12, 6, etc. And I have these all in a very specific order so that it just saves me a bunch of time with my template set. And you'll also notice if I wanted to, I've done a little bit here in my mixer window for that specific, in this case, violin one instance, you'll notice how I already on my master bus within VN Ensemble, I've already taken my pan and I've already closed it off to a small section that represents where violin one would be sitting in an actual orchestral hall. And what that does is it just instantly provides me with a template if I do that for all of my instruments, where all of my instruments are sitting in the right spot before I start. I've also gone through and added reverbs and bust everything so that it's just a very functional template for when I want to start writing quickly. So let me show you this in action. So let's, for example, let's go to a blank slot like right here, euphoniums. It's currently a blank patch. There's nothing associated with it. It's just a blank MIDI channel. And all I do, go to the MIDI effects spot hit scripter and it pulls up a programming language that you don't have to understand because the folks over at audio grocery have already done the hard work for you and all you have to do is go to your factory default list ag which stands for audio grocery 
and then the one that we want is Channel Switcher Pro. And instantly the entire script is in there. Look at all that beautiful script that I have no idea what any of that stuff means. But the important part is we have channel one all the way down to channel 16. They're currently just lines for blank spaces. I can go in here and I can type in euphonium short. And instantly, if I hit run script, it updates over here on this side. And notice how it just patched channel name. It changed that name to euphonium short because that's the script I'm loading. And then instantly I have 16 channels and you can set all of the parameters of what you want them to actually do. But what I've done is I've set them up to trigger different channels. So channel one on my list here activates channel one of the input MIDI channel and then vice versa. If I just continue going down to channel two, channel two, you can line them all up or you can do all of them to activate all of your sounds if you want to create your own multis. So it's a really cool system here. And that's really it. And what I like to do is leave this window open and I hit the link button so that every time I change instruments, as you can see here, if I go over to the tuba track, it instantly links everything together. So it's automatically on that patch instead of being stuck on the window of the euphoniums. So as you can imagine, this is a very powerful tool for writing quickly. So let me show you in action how this actually works. So something you might want to do, as I did in this Christmas track, is use a lot of instruments within one family. So I used a lot of percussion elements here. There are multiple board instruments, which are marimba, vibraphone, glockenspiel, the list goes on there. But as you can see, they actually all stem from the same Boards Vienna Ensemble Pro linked track. So if I were to just go over here, you'll notice as I slide up and down, I have Celesta, Portales, Glockenspiel, Bright Vibraphone, Xylophone, Rimba. And so those are the six that I have set up through Vienna. So you might be wondering, how do I write for all these different instruments at the same time if they're all in one track? So the way that I do this is I will play a MIDI track. So let me just solo that. So then what I did is I would right click and go to bounce in place. And in Logic, that creates a separate audio track specific to that one MIDI region. And there it is right here. Here, if I were to solo that, you can see it, listen to it. Pretty cool. And then I now have my audio bounce of that one MIDI file. And then let's say if I want to save that for later, all I'd have to do is create a new MIDI track underneath and then copy and paste that information down into that blank MIDI track, mute it if I want or just leave it empty. And that way I have that information if I want to copy and paste it later. And then for example, if I want to just cycle through my sounds, I can solo that again and find out which board instrument is my favorite. So currently the reason it sounds different is because it was on Celesta. But if I were to play that, I'm going to just toggle as I play. Pretty cool, huh? So you can even set this in the automation to latch or touch. And as I move my MIDI slider, it'll actually change as I record. Pretty cool stuff. So then if I go back and play it, while it's in read mode. It'll actually play back all of that information. So my other favorite part about this entire system is it's all automated. It's all under scripter patch channel name, which is what I'm affecting anyway with my MIDI slider. And I can instantly, if I just want to click, I can hit one instrument and then the entire track will instantly turn into that one instrument.
or I can actually go in and change every note, every two notes, whatever I want to do there. It's a very, very cool system. But I think ultimately the way that this works best is if you bounce the audio of every take. So you'll notice this entire track is consists of audio files that I've bounced and copied and pasted. And I think that helps anyway, just because you're dealing with MIDI data to bounce to audio and to make sure that everything lines up perfectly. So that is how you can set up an orchestral template using Vienna Ensemble Pro and Audio Groceries Logic Pro X Toolkit. Check out the link in the description below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. It's been a pleasure, guys. See you next time.